Welcome. So before we get started, uh, you're gonna hear some like little scratching sounds. Bernie and Sadie just got new Himalayan yak chews. These are their favorite things ever. They're basically just yak milk, salt, lime juice. I can't remember what else, but they fucking love them and they last forever. So. I am really nervous to film this right now. I don't know why this has become so unnatural for me to just talk off cue. Actually, I do know why and I'm gonna talk about why. I'm also gonna be doing my makeup while I talk to you guys. I haven't done anything like this in a while. Like I sort of did this in a vlog like a couple months ago, but I chickened out and didn't say as much as I needed to say. I just need to say some things. Like I haven't had a time and a place to share things that I've just, God, now I'm just rambling. Basically, I, <laughs> the last year have really shut myself off from my subscribers I feel I still talk to you guys all the time don't get me wrong I interact with people normally about the type of content I do I'm always interacting with you guys on Instagram Twitter I definitely didn't like hide away but I really shut down the amount of information I was sharing, which I do think is important. I think there's such a thing on YouTube as oversharing information and it can lead to just anxiety. I'm gonna do this like beauty guru style. So we are using the RX hangover from Too Faced. I literally don't know anything about makeup anymore. So don't expect like a good makeup video here. But that is just like a little primer situation. I really wanted to just open up to you guys today about a bunch of things. I feel like I've just had this wall up Partly because the type of content I do now is normally about telling you stories. It's about educating people and I've lost my ability to just Connect with my audience like one-to-one -one, like just per you know and I used to be able to do that really easily because I felt normal and Not that I don't feel normal now But I have way more subscribers than I ever thought in a thousand million years that I would have and I have social anxiety so <laughs> It's kind of an interesting mix to be like super introverted and be a youtuber But it seems like most youtubers are introverted. So like I know a ton of them out there get it turns out that having like hundreds of thousands of people Watching what you post to the internet is like a little stressful. I get probably too sensitive about comments and not really about like mean whatever I don't care you can call me a name or whatever but I get like hurt when people say that I'm not good at what I do and on blog channels I noticed there were more people that were just kind of like just here for the show just to like see my life and it used to be like my blog channel was just like people it was like a connection, it was like a social thing for me, like just connecting with a few people. And now I realize there's a lot more people that are interested in seeing this kind of stuff. So I just kind of shut down and didn't want to talk on camera at all. And that hasn't been the main reason. There comes a point where, by the way, this is some Tarte Amazonian Clay Foundation. I think a lot of YouTubers deal with this issue. I was starting to just focus more on what like a very small percent, I don't even get that much hate, so I don't know why I've been so fucking sensitive, but it got to a point where it was really affecting my mental health and making me feel all types of things and I wasn't paying attention as much to my subscribers that like don't say mean things. <laughs> It's just like, it's it's bad to let the negativity be so much louder than the positivity when the positivity like just blows the negativity away. It's like a 98 to 2% ratio, you know what I mean? And it's been like so foolish for me to be like that. And I just kind of needed to step back, look at things and remember who I am. When you have so many people watching you, people start creating a narrative of who you are. Like I started filming with the idea of the hater being the audience like how am i gonna make this so that they have nothing mean for them to say about me everything about my life i started over analyzing and i'm like people are gonna judge me for not having a clean office people are gonna judge me for this and that but then i realized that like most people aren't gonna do that and it's not fair to you guys to just bail because of all these other people and it's not fair to me because i started doing youtube and started a vlog channel because i wanted to do it and i really wish that i had been doing it more and like Part of the reason is because I've been really sick and I'm gonna explain that in a second. I think a lot of it has been fear of opening up to you guys, fear of just being real Kendall Ray versus like me telling you a little story about a conspiracy or something. Like, are, am I too boring just me? Like, do people even give a fuck about me? I've always come across as really confident and I am to an extent, um, but I definitely have issues with thinking people don't like me. You guys have given me every reason in the world to know that that's not true, but like it's still in my mind. And that's mental illness, you know? I, I know people out there get it if you've experienced it. I'm really trying to challenge myself to get back into vlogging. I got a new vlog camera. I want to be capturing these moments in my life. It's making me sad, but like 
Another huge reason is because I was feeling so shitty and I really need to explain all of this to you guys. Every time I started sharing health stuff, I would get like a billion people telling me, I think you have this, I think you have this, I think you need to do this, here's how you get better, here's what you need to do. And it just becomes really overwhelming um, having so many mixed things like, <laughs> so uh, I don't know, I just kind of stopped talking about it, but I really want to open back up because I know a lot of you out there are dealing with similar illness I, I don't know how to what to say anymore about it guys I literally suck at doing my makeup these days like I'm surprised it turns out well ever if I'm gonna explain my health thing for those of you who care I'm always like no one cares enough to hear the whole fucking story but I know a lot of you do and if you don't understand like the whole story you're not gonna understand what I've been going through and I need to just open up I'm trying to learn to just open up on here and just be myself you know it's harder to do than you'd think and I thought I was doing it for a really long time but I think it I was when I first started and then Somewhere along the line, I like put up a wall. So to explain, because I always think that like the same people who have been watching me since the beginning of my vlog channel, like four years ago when there was no one, are the same people like have been, you know, I know there's a lot of you that don't know anything about like my life. So I was diagnosed with PCOS when I was younger. That was the first thing I was diagnosed with. And PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Basically we get cysts on your ovaries, you gain weight. Um, so that's when my I first started having problems and the weight gain was the biggest thing for me at first. It's been a challenge my whole life. I've talked about it, you know, on my channel multiple times. I've been very open about that because a lot of it's just been completely out of my control. And there's some other symptoms to that as well. Um, but then when I was 17, I was diagnosed with something called Hajimoto's, which is an autoimmune disease, which if you don't know what that means, it's basically when your body attacks itself. So there's several different types of autoimmune diseases. And the one I have is where your body is attacking your thyroid. My thyroid attacks itself all the time. So it's kind of like feeling like you have strep all the time. But like, I went a really long time. I got on medication when I was like 17, 18. And went through college and definitely had I mean I went through a little you know spout of depression in college for sure and my mom always thought I had something called Cushing syndrome now I don't know if any of you out there have this or are familiar with it it's not super well known but my mom has it and me and my mom have all the same symptoms so my mom has thought I've had this since I was legit 12. I've been going to an endocrinologist I've gone to so many different specialists it's not like this is all of a sudden just happened this year this has been years for me i started with a different doctor in college and i've been taking all these tests i got a cat scan because if you have cushing syndrome it's so hard to explain there's no way i'm gonna explain this right but my mom had a secretion tumor on her adrenal gland which caused her to overproduce cortisol and i'm currently overproducing cortisol and we're trying to figure out why you can also have this in your uh pituitary gland so i had a scan for that but I never got the adrenal scan. And my mom's tumor wasn't found until five years ago and then she had the surgery. So since then I realized I have all the same symptoms as my mom. So I, I went on like thinking, you know, any anytime I had shitty issues, I just blamed it on my Hajimoto's. But it was mostly controlled, you know, my thyroid levels are normal whatever the doctors barely know shit with this stuff i swear to god but they said my thyroid hormones were normal nothing to be concerned about and i i was fine for a while and then i started having this like arm pain in my uh like tendons right here about two years ago a little over two years ago now um i thought it was from editing youtube videos so i had no idea it was anything else and i just tried to lay off of being on my phone like i basically just blamed it on like my technology like i'm on my shit too much then it started to move into my hands it started to move into my wrist and then this december is when it started getting really bad and i started getting exhausted so tired but not to the point where i'm sleeping like it's not that type of tired it's like depletion it's like feeling weak uh, it's something hormonal, like something's wrong. I'm getting enough sleep. So I kind of thought I was just having flare-up of Hajimoto's. But to this day, it hasn't gotten any better. It's gotten way worse. So I have, all of a sudden I have high blood pressure, which is, you know, a sign of Cushing syndrome. I have um, high red blood count, which we can't figure out what that's from. Widespread pain, but it's all in my upper body. So it moved to this arm. That's how I knew it wasn't like an injury. Like this is moving around my body and it feels like everything's like eroding, like everything creaks. Nothing ever used to be like this for me. You know, it like wasn't like this. It's really upsetting to talk about, honestly. I am in so much pain. Like this summer has been 
terrible. I've, I'm honestly like trying to keep myself from slipping into like a serious depression because I have been so frustrated. I'm obviously seeing doctors. I'm working with an endocrinologist, a rheumatologist, obviously a general practitioner. Um, I did a sleep apnea test this week. Um, I have a bunch of other symptoms, like all these weird things. I have had insane anxiety, like anxiety like I've never experienced it in my whole life. So that's part of the reason I haven't been filming, you know, don't feel fucking good. Plus, I don't do that much. Like, my life has slowed the fuck down since I've gotten sick because I'm barely getting out of bed every day. Like, there are some days where I just can't do it. Like, I literally can't. I get in so much pain, and the last two days have actually sucked, like, really bad, but... I just wanted to talk on here so bad, so I decided to just sit down and do it anyway. But I'm in a ton of pain even right now. Probably why I, you can hear me breathing. Like, I get kind of out of breath when it hurts. But we're not sure that that's what it is. Like, it's hard to diagnose this, and they're very slow about just giving you the test. Like, I'm sure you guys are like, just get the MRI. I wish I could. Trust me. That's my goal by the end of the year is to get an MRI. Um, but I could also have, they also think I could have fibromyalgia. I could possibly have Ehlers-Danlos. My They believe my sister has it, but she's never been confirmed diagnosed my dad's gonna get a gene test and it's so complicated like so frustrating i barely can explain it because i barely know what's going on like, anyway but i did this sleep apnea test this week to like try to rule that out because i don't think that's what it is i don't think that causes like pain like this and this week i'm getting x-rays and uh, what else am I doing? I have to, I keep having to collect my pee for 24 hours. That's really fun. I have to seriously store it in our fridge and keep it for 24 hours. And that's how they test your cortisol levels, um, which mine are like in this weird gray area where they're high, but they're not sure if it's high enough to be Cushing syndrome. But I'm like, dude, my mom has it. She had pain, the same pain as me. It like hurt her in her arms, in her shoulders, all up her body and never had lower body pain. So I have the exact same thing. She has high blood pressure. She has the anxiety. She has, she is everything the same as me. So I'm bringing her to my next doctor's appointment to be like, listen, bitch. I'm just desperate to figure it out because I feel really depressed. Like, I feel like I don't want to have kids right now. I couldn't imagine caring for a kid. Like, I feel like I'm barely getting through every day. It's like so hard for me to talk about because I feel so weak. I feel like people won't understand this. That's why I almost haven't shared it because... And a lot of people who have fibromyalgia or Lyme's disease or an autoimmune condition that's kind of like an invisible illness suffer from this or deal with this anxiety that people don't believe them because you can't like show them like here's you know physical proof of how I'm feeling like you, I can't even put into words how I feel most days and it's it makes me not want to be around anyone which has been awful you know I've been like very secluded it's honestly been like a super hard time but. I wanted to share it because I know there are people out there who have worse things and that was part of the reason I almost didn't want to share it at first because I was like people have so much worse things I don't want to complain when someone has cancer or is disabled you know but this is like so bad for me I feel like I'm not living my best life and editing has been so hard I have so much anxiety about not uploading and like people getting mad at me for not uploading and it's just been obviously it's been really hard for me I'm, I'm trying to really just be open about it I just feel like I don't want to like if this is permanent if I have fibromyalgia that basically means they don't know what the fuck's wrong and they put you on some medicine and there's not a cure like it sounds sounds like no matter what I have there's probably not gonna be a great cure so I'm trying to like learn how to deal with this now and learn how to live with this um, but it's hard because like physical activity is so hard for me like yoga hurts me I can't even put any pressure onto my like wrists at all I'm trying to figure everything out with this new way of living for me and Josh having to take care of me a lot of the time like god thank god for him he's had to step up in so many ways and help and i just am so grateful to have someone who like understands and and doesn't make me feel bad about what i have you know or like un doesn't try to minimize it like he believes me he understands me and like he'll get it if i have to leave somewhere i have you know like he doesn't judge me for it because he understands it's all real he's laid next to me crying in bed almost every night this whole summer like he gets how bad this has been and i have been hesitant to be with anyone else like I have barely seen other friends um, I see my cousin a lot but she's like my family uh, so yeah I've been very uh, secluded it's been weird I thought getting back into vlogging would help me I have a new vlog camera now I haven't been telling you any of the products I've been using but who gives a fuck I want to be as open about it as I can so I've decided to now that I've explained it to people like what's been going on I want to share 
my experience i want to do more on this channel that's more like this like casual videos this is not going to be just a vlog channel anymore this is going to be just a second channel like josh and i want to do fun things on here i want to document my experience trying to get diagnosed i just my only thing i want to say is like if you write me something like a comment being like try this or do this i'm not ignoring you there's just so many people that care which is like the best thing ever i mean i feel so lucky but at the same time i can't respond to everyone else partly because it hurts to type <laughs> this gets a you know a little difficult and so i'm just trying to listen to the doctor but um yeah this is the uh naked heat palette it's been like very different doing what i do now on youtube versus doing what i used to do um on youtube which was a lot more open a lot more unrehearsed like i don't have a script i don't have notes uh and it's really nice to sit down and do this i've been afraid you know i've been listening too much to the negativity i've been i just have so much anxiety i feel like it's honestly it's somewhat mental and it's a lot medical but you know the two go hand in hand like pain and discomfort go so in hand with mental health as well you know it's emotional to be in pain it's depressing you start to wonder i started to question is this in my head at one point i was literally wondering if i was going crazy like i'm like maybe this is not as bad maybe everyone feels like this all the time and everyone's in pain and they just hide it really well or they deal with it and i'm just like weak <laughs> so i was like at that point where i had to be like okay listen <laughs> this is not normal for you you don't want to be like this all right i gotta fucking concentrate when i do this i don't know how beauty gurus talk and do their makeup at the same time i'm like this is turning out so bad all right I had to get a fan it was getting really hot sorry if you can hear it or whatever honestly i think one of the things that has made me like reevaluate everything and and want to open back up is shane dawson <laughs> as crazy as that sounds um I've been watching, you know, his new series. I mean, who hasn't, right? It's so fucking good. And he has been so inspiring to me talking to other YouTubers and hearing them like having the same issues, like worried about like all, like what are people gonna think of me? What are they gonna judge me for this? They're gonna judge me for that. I don't know, it's just something about hearing other people worried about what other people are gonna think of them and like wanting to tell them like, don't worry about that though. Like there's so many people that love you. And then thinking like, uh, I should be telling myself the same thing so much anxiety is built up around it because I heard someone talking about this somewhere having stage fright as a performer obviously if you're like an actress or something like that there's a lot of stage fright involved and it can cause a lot of anxiety for actors and stuff with YouTube it's kind of like that but all the time I'm just like done letting my fears and insecurities and worries about what other people are gonna think of my life um and how boring it is like I, I that's my main thing is like my life is boring i don't have a porsche i don't have like tons of stuff going on i don't see other youtubers it's just like us chilling like our life's really simple my life is very simple and i started thinking like who gives a fuck about me and who gives a fuck about what josh and i do i remember one of my favorite things about vlogging was just recording normal days and being able to look back and be like what was i doing on a thursday in college you know it's like really cool not many people have that so I'm gonna get back into it. Um, I'm definitely not like a daily vlogger. I will never be a daily vlogger. I couldn't stand that type of pressure, but but I've decided to just as often as I can or whenever I feel good to vlog, you know? And even if it's boring and it's just me playing with my dogs. So interesting too, cause like I used to share so much more when I vlogged, like when my parents were getting divorced, I shared a lot of that. I shared moments crying on camera. Like now I wouldn't do that. And I was like, why did I feel comfortable doing that before and not now? Well, I mean, the clear answer is because I have more people watching and there's more opinions and more, yeah, distress. Um, yeah, it felt really good to say all that. Hopefully, I still have to put mascara on, but I hope you guys enjoyed just like listening to this. If any of you listened, I have this idea in my head that no one's gonna care about what I said. No one's gonna wanna watch this and no one's gonna watch it all the way through because how boring to listen to my health problems. <laughs> I don't know. We're gonna do it. We're gonna upload. And I hope that this is the start of more personal connection with you guys because I just, I really miss that. I really, really do. And it's like been noticeably lacking from my life feeling connected to you guys because when you start to feel disconnected from your audience um which i feel connected with you guys in a lot of ways because of the podcast i think that's like i just know that not everyone watches the podcast but i'm connecting to you more than just telling you stories and teaching you which i love to do but i don't want that to be all i do you know so i'm just figuring it out my whole youtube career has just been figuring it out like i never thought i would be i'm almost at a million subscribers 
Like, I can't believe it. I seriously cannot believe it. Um, it's almost like I don't even know that that's happening. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I do have a lot of interesting projects behind the scene that are going on. There's a lot of exciting things going on. We're building a podcast studio right now in our house. I wanted to document that. So um, hopefully this is the start of more vlogs. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed listening. And I'll see you in my next vlog. Bye.